Anna works for the uh, International um, uh, Women's uh, Media Foundation, and um, she has uh, given, uh, remember, uh, a session uh, before, right in the beginning of our program. And uh, I'm very, very thankful uh, to Anna that uh, she uh, took, is taking the time again to, to speak to you. Um, and uh, today she's uh, going to be very focused on uh, women uh, in the news media, which is really important for all of us. It doesn't matter if you're, if you're a man or a woman. Um, uh, women are, you know, they're, they're, they're not equally um, uh, portrayed or have the equally uh, opportunities uh, uh, and have their, their issues being discussed in the news media. And, uh, and Anna is going to talk about this, uh, this more and, uh, uh, to us, and, and especially for us men, uh, to all of, all of you in, in, in the class, uh, Morth um, and O'Day. It's it's really important for 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 us men to understand um, women's related uh, uh, issues uh, and how we how we need to treat them in in the in the news media. And Anna is going to talk about this uh, today to us. All right. Am I uh, am I ready to go? Yes, you are yes. ready to go. All right. Let's do this. Um, well, again, hello everybody. Sorry it took so long this morning. I don't know what was going on, but um, I'm glad that I made it back to uh, to Amman to see you guys. I hope um, you had a good time so far between the last time we spoke and this time. Um, I've heard you got to go on a couple of exciting field trips, and you've had a lot of uh, great international and Jordanian speakers. And uh, Lars and I, I just want to say this real quick, Lars and I were talking yesterday um, about uh, today's session, and, and uh, he and I agreed that if we were ever given a, an opportunity like the one that you have right now, we'd absolutely take it because this program has turned out to be something very amazing. And in a little, in a way, we're a little envious that we don't get to be sitting in the classroom with you today and listen to the, some cool speakers. So, anyway, um, I want to talk to you a little bit um, about women in the news media today. Um, and I want to talk to you a little bit more about what I do um, at the International Women's Media Foundation. Um, and I just want to make sure that you all know that, just like last time, you can interrupt me anytime. Um, feel free to uh, be rude. I, I'm, uh, I'm from northern Germany. Everybody there is rude, so that's fine. I'm used to it. <clears throat> but also, um, I want this to be more of a conversation. Last time was more of a sort of a, a lecture or you know more of a training and today I want um, are we did we lose them? All right. Something weird is going on with my computer. Is everybody still there? Yes. All right. It, al it almost looked like I lost you. Okay, no, everything is on. Uh, everything is on. All right, cool. Um, so I just want to make sure that you guys know today is more of a conversation. So um, feel free to to participate and to disagree with me um, if if you feel that you need to uh, tell me that you disagree. Um, that's uh, this whole issue is is um, a huge discourse all over the world. And I'd be happy to have you um, as part of that. So um, I have prepared two PowerPoint presentations. Um, and I want to dive into the first one. Um, let me see. This is the one. I'm going to share my screen with you. And um, we'll take it from there. All right, can everybody see the uh, the PowerPoint presentation? Yes. All right. All right, so here again is the title for today's um, for today's talk, Women in the News Media. And um, I don't know what you think when you hear this topic. I know a lot of people, including me, think, ah, oh, you know, women, this old topic about women, why does it always have to be about women? And I'm sure that um, you know the girls around uh, the room now think, and I, I am a woman, but I'm not a feminist. I don't really care about women's rights and gender issues. And maybe a couple of you guys think, 
well, you know, I'm a man. Why, why should I care about women's rights? I'm not a woman. Why, why should I care about gender issues? And I just want, I want to make sure that you guys know that today's session is not about turning you into feminists. It's not um, about teaching you to become an advocate for gender equality. I just want you to understand the reality of gender discrimination in, in the news media in particular. So um, I want um, for you to understand what gender discrimination really is, um, how it manifests itself in the news media, and um, I want to make sure that, you know, Lars was already saying this, that we understand gender equality and gender discrimination doesn't necessarily mean it's always against women. Gender discrimination means it can be done by women to men, it can, can be done by men to women. Um, it's basically a disadvantage based on your gender, whether you're male or female, and I'm sure all of you at one point have felt that maybe you were excluded for whatever reason, but mainly because you were a man or a woman. And we want to talk a little bit about that reality today. Um, so let's start with looking at what the reality is for women in the news media. And um, my organization, the International Women's Media Foundation, um, did global research about two years ago in 2011. We had um, a global survey done um, to investigate uh, the status of women in the news media. Um, and this report was published. You can download it from our website later if you like. Um, as part of this report, we were trying to understand a few things. Um, we were not trying to, um, to find a solution to any problem that we might encounter. We just wanted to basically have uh, data that tells us a little bit more about what the status of women is in the news me media in various countries around the world. Um, so we were looking at how how many women work in the news businesses uh, versus how many men. We looked at the ratio of you know uh, women versus men in certain news companies. We um, also looked at is there a so-called class ceiling for women? Are there you know, higher senior rank levels, management levels, governance levels, executive levels that women are usually excluded from participating in. You know, do do the, the higher ranks of a news organization, um, are they all occupied by men or do women get to go in there? Um, we also looked at, you know, what kind of jobs are women and men doing in news organizations? You know, are certain jobs primarily done by women and other jobs primarily done by men. Um, and we also looked at the so-called uh, wage gap at um, equal pay. Do women make less money um, in jobs that are comparable to uh, jobs that men are make, uh, that, that, that men are holding? Um, we looked at, at uh, salary data and then last but not least we looked at gender equality policies as they call them. Gender equality, uh, gender equality policies are usually um, obviously um, you can see it here on the screen sexual harassment policies but they're also pregnancy leave policies, maternity leave, paternity leave. Mm -hmm. If the father decides that he wants to um, you know take a, a break from working to take care of a child. Um, these kind of things are gender equality policies. We looked at those as well. And we did that in, if I remember correctly, we did that in uh, 59 countries. Um, we looked at, I think, over a thousand news media companies and um, surveyed over, I think, almost close to 12,000 people. Um, so this is a huge report that my organization did. It took a long time and um, as a matter of fact, um, we also did our research in Jordan. So we had um, we had uh, quite a few uh, researchers on the ground in Jordan that surveyed um, ten Jordan news companies, uh, one radio station, and um, nine newspapers or uh, print magazines. Um, I don't know the names of them, but I can look them up for you. Um, anyway, so. Uh, let's dive a little bit deeper into what the reality is for women in the news media in Jordan. Um, I, uh, 
Um, let's go through the five points that I uh, just mentioned. Let's start with the men to women ratio, and this is this is all surveyed data. So you may actually be much more familiar with the the reality behind this, and this may not come as a surprise to you. It may come as a surprise to you. We can talk about it a little bit later. How you feel about the data that you're about to see. So um, let's look at. Um, some general data in, in Jordan first. Uh, so not just news uh, companies, but basically um, the entire workforce. Um, Jordan ranks fairly low um, among all nations in overall gender quality. It ranks 113th in the world. Um, Jordan ranks even lower um, in terms of uh, number of women in elected office, um, politicians, and so on and so forth. It ranks 121st. Um, however, Jordan does rank relatively high in terms of wage equality. It ranks 38th, and um, maybe one of you can explain that to me later if there's a, a policy for that, that that makes that happen, because that is very interesting to, um, to me to find out a little bit more about. So anyway, so that is basically the, the, the situation in Jordan as we found it for, uh, our, for, for our research. Um, let's let's dive into the data that shows a, us a little bit more about uh, women in Jordanian news companies. Um, so when we look at the ratio of men and women in news companies, uh, we found that women were severely underrepresented in in Jordan in Jordanian media outlets, with men outnumbering them nearly five to one. So for every woman that works at a media outlet in Jordan, there's five men. Um, that is obviously when you look at the world's population there are slightly more women in the world than men so in terms of population it should be one-on-one. -on -one. It's really interesting um, I think that men outnumber women in media outlets all over the world so even in the United States and in Germany uh, men outnumber women almost two to one. Um, so you're not the only ones uh, that, that um, have a, a male um, majority in news companies. Uh, when we look at what we call the glass ceiling, and I don't know if, if that's what you call it in Jordan, uh, in some countries they call it the sticky floor, and, and it describes basically the, the, the uh, highest level that women can easily get to within the workforce. Um, in terms of rank, so a glass ceiling is usually found for for many in many places. You can find women in all sorts of jobs, but when it comes to the executive, to the top executive level, you usually see men. Mm -hmm. So that's where we would see the glass ceiling. Um, let's see in Jordan. Um, it seems that women are particularly excluded from executive ranks, meaning that only about twelve percent. Um, of of the uh, executive ranks and top uh, level management positions are filled by women in Jordan, um, and what we mean by executive ranks and and top level management is where that's where the policies are made. That's where the decisions are made for um, for a, a news company a media outlet. So obviously, women are severely underrepresented in those ranks. Um, women. Uh, women's representation actually goes down even at the lower level. At senior and middle management, women rank below 10%. They rank in the single digits, um, which is uh, actually, when you look at um, at the numbers, that is very, very, very low. That is one of the lowest numbers we found um, in the entire world. And um, when we look at, you know, the news reporting level, basically, you know, the 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 level that you would, most of you would be at if you work for a media outlet, uh, senior and junior professionals that report. Women represent um, about 20 and 25 percent um, senior and junior professionals. So that is about a quarter of the workforce and a fifth of the workforce. Um, and that is probably um, uh, an experience that you have made yourself, maybe as a man or a woman wor working for a media outlet, is that it obviously women are severely underrepresented. So um, that, that it's, it's very interesting when you look at that. Um, and then when, when you dig a little deeper and you look at, you know, okay, so there are women obviously working 
um, in media outlets, but where are they at? And when we look at that, you know, what positions do they hold? Do they hold the traditional secretary positions? You see here the woman with the eight arms, or are they in sort of more of the uh, more intellectual positions, such as the reporter that you see up there? We found that women in uh, Jordanian news companies were almost completely absent in the production uh, ranks, meaning, you know, the producers for radio shows, um, TV shows, and so on and so forth. And um, they were completely absent in the technical professional ranks, meaning, you know, uh, camera women, um, you know, uh, audiovisual professionals, um, completely missing in Jordanian news companies. And um, I also want to ask, talk to you about that a little later and see how you feel about that, because I know um, a few of, of you are actually um, on that track to become, um, you know, audiovisual professionals. And it would be very interesting for me to hear a little bit more about how you feel about uh, women being included in the workforce in Jordan in those professions. So when you look at that, um, you know, obviously the next question for anybody in the United States is we have uh, Equal Pay Day coming up. Uh, Equal Pay Day is sort of an international day that uh, that sort of marks the uh, the importance of women getting equal pay for equal work. And, um, oh, actually, I have to go back. I'm, uh, there's one more slide that I, um, that I almost uh, missed. Um, actually, this is a very interesting slide, so forget what I just said. Let's go back to uh, where women are represented in the ranks. Um, in Jordanian news companies, uh, women are best represented in sales, finance, and administrative ranks um, at almost 30%. Um, you know, those are mostly the secretary jobs that you see, you know, the, the woman in the green shirt with her eight arms doing. And you know what's very, very interesting to me about the number is obviously this is a much higher number than we saw in any of the other fields, but what we found in almost every other country that we surveyed was that women usually had the majority in these jobs. And Jordan was one of the few countries where women, even in the administrative jobs on the secretarial level, were still in a minority, and that is very, very interesting. Um, to me as well. So we'll talk about that maybe a little later and you can ex help me understand that a little better. Um, okay, let's go back to uh, the wage gap and uh, equal pay. Um, you know, you see the little picture here. This is a huge problem, for example, in the United States. In the United States, um, they say that women uh, earn 70, 77 cents to the dollar, meaning that for every dollar that a man earns, a woman in the same job earns 77 cents. Um, so that is a huge pay gap. And what was very interesting to us was that, uh, you know, in line with Jordan's um, uh, high global rank in terms of equal pay, um, the wage gap between men and women in, in Jordanian media outlets was very, very minor. So uh, apparently women um, earn the same pay for the same work as men. Um, which is great. That is a great accomplishment. That is something that um, the uh, the uh, Western Europe and the United States could definitely learn from. Um, so uh, let's look at um, uh, gender equality policies. Um, the majority of news companies in Jordan have no policy on gender equality. There is no stated document that um, that supports gender equality in the workplace. Uh, the majority of news companies in Jordan has no policy on sexual harassment, um, a policy that would, for example, line out what sexual harassment is and what would happen to somebody who is um, who who engages in sexual harassment. Um, the majority of news companies in Jordan has a policy on maternity leave. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, um, the, it's, I don't know if it's the law, but I saw that um, most women get uh, 10 weeks of paid maternity leave in Jordan. And then if they decide to stay, you know, and take care of the, the infant um, for longer, they can, they can be gone for up to a year. But, you know, anything in excess of 10 weeks would be without pay. Um, but that is, that is very similar to the United States. Um, the majority of news companies in Jordan has no policy on paternity leave. 
um, if the father decides that they want to take care of the baby instead of the mom, uh, mm -hmm. there is no policy in most uh, news companies in Jordan. Um, most uh, news companies in Jordan do not offer child care assistance. Um, why is, you know, you may ask yourself, why is child care assistance um, a gender equality policy? Um, that's very obvious. As, as a woman, obviously a lot of uh, women want to be mothers and they want to have a baby, but they also want to have a career. And in order to combine that, you need help with child care. Somebody needs to take care of your child. And of course, the easiest way to do this is if your company actually offers um, you know, a child care facility where in the morning as you go to work, you can drop off your child. And, you know, in the evening when you leave your job, you just pick it up again and the child is taken care of and played with and, uh, you know, has other kids to play with um, over the course of the day. So um, that makes it a lot easier for women to uh, be mothers and professionals at the same time. So um, in Jordan, it does not seem to be the case that uh, there is uh, child care assistance in media outlets, but um, the majority of news companies in Jordan does offer um, educational training for women. Um, that is also a gender equality um, issue because uh, obviously um, if, if you can, as you're on the job, if you have access to additional educational training, you know, you can set yourself up for additional promotions and so on and so forth. So that is also a gender equality issue. Um, so that is the data that we found on on Jordan um, in our survey in 2011, um, and I we we actually in our report sort of um, you know after looking at the country itself we kind of looked at the region and we looked at the other countries in the region that um, you know that surrounded the country to sort of make sense of you know whether some of the data that we found was in line with you know, other countries um, and, and their policies or not. Um, in the Middle East and Northern Africa, we actually only looked at five countries, so this is a very small sample. We obviously looked at Jordan. We also looked at Israel. Uh, we um, surveyed Lebanon. Uh, we surveyed Egypt. And then sort of, you may not even perceive them as a neighbor, we also looked at Morocco. These are uh, including Jordan, the five countries that we looked at in the Middle East and um, Northern Africa. I cannot exactly explain to you why they didn't look at any other countries in the Middle East um, or in Northern Africa. Um, it may have had something to do with, you know, the Arab Spring and, and maybe in 2011 uh, serving becoming a little harder and, you know, the focus of people being on other things. So, um, but I don't know, that's just my own speculation. Anyway, let's look at how Jordan compares to its regional neighbors. Um, in the region, and these are all the data that I'm showing you now are basically the average in the region. Men outnumber women in news companies two to one. So if you remember in Jordan, men outnumber women five to one. You can see that in, um, in comparison to um, the entire region, uh, Jordan ranks a lot lower than, than the rest. Um, the glass ceiling, women's representation dropped substantially in the levels above middle management. Um, that is also what we saw in Jordan, although as we saw in Jordan, women's representation was generally very, very low. Um, when we look at um, the, wa the, pay, uh, the, the, the wage gap or the, the equal pay, um, across the region men earn three to five times more than women in governance and top management. And if you remember, um, in Jordan, the pay was fairly equal, so Jordan ranks a lot higher than its neighbors in the regard of equal pay. And um, sort of as a as a summary, our report says that the marginalization um, of women is especially serious in Jordan, but relatively better in both Egypt and Israel, uh, where women are well over half the journalism workforce in the company surveyed. And I find that very interesting as well that. Um, that in these countries that are obviously part of, of the greater region um, of, uh, you know, the Middle East, um, actually women out, seem to outnumber men in the journalism workforce. Um, so uh, that, that is uh, basically my, um, my presentation. And let me go back and come back on the camera. Um, there I am. 
And so you saw all this data, and I hope I didn't kill you with uh, with the data. I tried to um, to sort of design it in um, in an interesting way. But now that you've seen it, um, I'd like to hear some of your thoughts on is that your experience? Did the, the, the data that I just showed you reflect your experience? And what are what are the explanation for some of the you know some of the data that we saw? Thank you for joining us at the first uh, about uh, the non equality. Equity. Equality. About the um, uh, gender non equality in the society. You know, in, in, in the Middle East or the, in the region of Af Middle East and North Africa, it's a kind of oriental uh, thinking by the people. It's uh, what they call it. Scientific uh, work, it's a uh, patriarch uh, society. Patriarch society, you know. Uh, the father is uh, the father, not the father, the male is uh, the main person in the family and in the Swiss society. Because of that, it will reflect to the business, of course, uh, and uh, to the media and every sector in, in all uh, society. Uh, that's first time, but there is something uh, uh, made it strange here. The opportunity for the girls to have a job is uh, higher than the uh, men in Jordan. Yes, you can, if, if uh, they, they like to have uh, females, employees more than uh, men. So maybe that will be hard on your part. <laughs> <laughs> Lars? Anybody? Yeah. Anna, yes. I think I think I think uh, Anna got dropped off. Uh, one second, let me uh, message her. Because we have a cut on the fiber links on on the Mediterranean Sea. What What do you say? The Okay, that's not good. Okay, one second. Let me let me let me try to uh, message uh, Anna. Yeah, just just one one second. I'm I'm trying to reach her. Um, uh, do, do, do you guys know when uh, when the cable will be fixed? Two weeks. 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 Two weeks.
in three weeks. That's terrible. No, they said they will fix it on uh, on fourth of April. Egypt. Egypt, but I don't know. Oh, I see. Some resources say to do some free. Wow. Okay, one, one second. Let me let me uh, try to get Anna. We will return to the facts. Seems like it seems like uh, Anna's internet just went down. The cable is it's cut in the air, you can't be ready to say this. Yeah, one second. So I'm, I'm, I'm calling Anna right now. Okay, so so it seems like Anna is uh, going back online. Uh, one second, she is writing. Okay, so so her internet it's not it's not the cable in Jordan. Her internet just went down, so she's uh, she's going back in. She's coming back into the session. So, so it's not the cable. The, it's not the, the cable to the Middle East. So, you know, this is this is America, developing world. What can you do? Okay. One second. So, um, da -da -da -da. she's. Uh, Okay, there she is. There she hey. is. <laughs> Anna, what happened? The internet, internet I, broke. Yeah, you know, um, we. Here's the thing that uh, you always think that you're in, you know, the, the most developed country in the world, but then the internet dies, and you realize no, nope, it's just like any other country in the world. It has its internet problems. I'm so sorry you were in interrupted. I'm, I'm very sorry about that. Yeah, uh, more, uh, please, please ask your question again. No, I want to answer the question. Oh. Yes, she, she was asking about why there are no equality in the society between uh, male and female. Or, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, gender, gender and equality, okay. Because yeah. the number of English and Arabic is very different. Uh, uh, you know, in our society, in Middle East, North Africa, Arab lands, or uh, maybe it's uh, Afghanistan, uh, Iran, Pakistan, India, uh, the Arab land, uh, Africa, Middle Africa. The, those societies are a little bit uh, patriarch societies. The, the father, and the, or not the father, the male is uh, uh, the most important thing in society. So that will be reflected on uh, on the business, on the business, on the business, and on the media and everywhere. You know, uh, but there are something unusual uh, in uh, Jordan. Excuse me. Uh, on, in Jordan, uh, if uh, male and female uh, apply for a job, they will take the female uh, more than the male. The, the male, the female have much, uh, more chance uh, than men in Jordan. But uh, by the way, it's not on all sectors. Like somebody said, uh, you know, they are uh, uh, 
families, we have the same culture, you know. A lot of families uh, didn't want to say their daughters the taxi driver or working or fixing cars. That's not I'm talking about the situation. Uh, to be specific and uh, do not hear uh, some uh, bitty feminist voices that uh, said I'm, I'm wrong. No, uh, on this job, the females have been accepted more than the men. But uh, some, some companies or some uh, institutions take heads because they uh, didn't have, the men didn't have a pregnant uh, vacation or another vacation. That's because because of that, you know, they are uh, a little, a little, a little uh, uh, sort of business. So, do you think that in comparison, like media companies, as they compare to uh, you know other companies or other jobs, do you feel that women are better represented in Jordan in media outlets than they are in? Other companies, for example, um, uh, you know, in the government and government jobs. Uh, okay. About about the media section, it's uh, we have to let's say we have to to ways of media, the official and uh, the government, let's say, the media, media, TV, anything. This uh, this institutions have. Uh, uh, high male, uh, high male employees on the, on the, in the, in the official, let's say, of the uh, media institution, uh, there are a lot of males because it's reflected the society. But in the private sector, maybe it's uh, hard chances, but uh, a, lot, a lot of uh, the, the new media, let's say, the new media section are. Uh, uh, are modern thought, you know, are affected of the, the, the open, open mind. A lot of them open mind, they don't care about uh, uh, orientalism or uh, it's not uh, convert, con yes? conservative like the, 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 the government institutions or media. It's, uh, a lot of them uh, they they look on they look more on the, the qualifications more than the, the gender or the age or the, even the study. You know, I know a lot of people work on the media section of the, the official. Uh, media section. They, they didn't uh, study even uh, journalism or media. They are some, some of them are uh, studying business, marketing, and they are working on media because they are uh, professional on this. They have uh, qualified on, uh, on the media more than the others, even more than the people who study uh, media. So the, the, the some institutions prefer the quality, the qualified. Qualifications more than uh, any any other uh, that, That's in some uh, institutions, not uh, all of them. So uh, we could say there are no. Uh, Yes, yes, there are no general ideas about uh, uh, journalism on media in Jordan because it's, uh, it's too different. There are a big gap between the official and the, let's say, the uh, unofficial institution. The private sector and the general sector. There are a big gap between them. So. Let, let me let me ask you um, when when you and and this is a question to all of you of course when you watch the media when you you know when you read newspapers or when you watch the news on television do you feel that men men's voices are portrayed more often than women's voices do you feel that usually when they ask an expert to comment on something when they interview a witness of something that do you feel that there's a quality there? Do you feel that there are women 
uh, that that get to be included in that as well, or is it a male majority there as well? Okay, I will answer my opinion. Uh, for, for, because I'm I'm journalist, I'm watching uh, the quality of the, the media meeting that I saw. Uh, in the majority of the females uh, working in the media field, they have a little bit uh, more opportunity because they want to prove themselves on the on this field. And I think uh, my fellow normal and she's a female. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Well, the first thing that I want to say to you is that uh, maybe there's a discrimination here between male and female in Jordan because we are uh, in public uh, sector. In the public sector, the men uh, have a uh, Okay, but the female have to uh, marry and have kids and be in home. That's our culture here in Jordan. You know, we are in Arab people. We have this idea. <laughs> well, uh, 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 the first, uh, yesterday, I go to a gas station and work with the manager to make a training for the girls to work in a gas station to make a uh, opportunity for the girls to find a job if she didn't have a degree. Anna, stand here. Anna? Yeah? Are you there? Yes. Okay. What do you think about those women? Anna, did, uh, yes. did you got that? No, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure what just happened. They were cutting out for a second. Okay, uh, Noor, can 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 you uh, can you uh, restate your question and uh, and uh, or your comment? Can can you can you uh, say again uh, what you wanted to to say to Anna? Okay. I know that the first thing, there's a discrimination here between male and female. We have a favoritism for the men, okay? Uh, they didn't know how to work, but they have the jobs. Uh, and uh, we will we'll make uh, a training for the girls to work in a gas station mm -hmm. to uh, give them opportunity to find jobs. Because uh, many of the girls they have to be, okay, and uh, the female when she works at a company, maybe. when she pregnant, she will uh, take a maternity leave. So uh, the boss will be uh, absent for that. He prefer male <laughs> than female. Uh, I would like also to share uh, some information about this. Hello? Uh, I think uh, that uh, I don't know why uh, <laughs> somebody is uh, you, you, you spoke to John Hagar. Uh, I, 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 I know some. Uh, <laughs>
the first ones to go get this for you. Uh, this one particular um, media uh, news reporter, journalist, she's a woman. Uh, she was the one that covered the, the bombings and she also covered other uh, news that happened with the king. So they're saying uh, um, that women, they, they can work in this uh, field and they're actually better and that in Jordan there are, there are more than the men. Yes. That's what they're saying. Yeah, and then Juan wants to add something. Okay. Uh, in Jordan, uh, in Jordan, the, the media, the media people that work in the media, the females are, uh, let's say, more professional than the males because the males talk it as a job. Just he want to work and to finish his day and go home. But the, the, the females, the journalists, take it as a fact. They work with, the, they work hard and they, because they love the work. Even you know, uh, they are, we have a journalist in Jordan, her name Rana Sabah. She's uh, discovered the oppressing of the people in South Jordan uh, in uh, 1980, 1989. And she became a famous journalist. She's a female. And, uh, and uh, the, the, the journalist that told you about it, we have the first journalist to have uh, breaking news about uh, the death of King Hussein. Before uh, some years, and uh, she she's the first one he watched. She was in the uh, in the hotel, had been bombed by a car and a man. She, you know, there are uh, a lot of females that they have work action. For, for me, I know a lot of uh, girls working on the media section, and they are hard working. Uh, and uh, maybe maybe I don't. I, that's uh, just an opinion or, or thought that they want to. <laughs> To they want to prove themselves as equality with the men in, the, in their institution. But it's, uh, it's let's say, let's say in the media field in Jordan, it's not that the, the women are, are better than the men. The females are better than the females. Um, so when you look at journalism schools, is there, uh, you know, people that study journalism at the university, is there as many girls, women in the programs as men? Uh, yes, yes, uh, maybe, maybe more because in Jordan the, the females are more than the men in everywhere in, in the society in general. So in the university, and by the way, the girls in, in study are better than the boys. If you watch the top ten, the top ten degrees in that school in Jordan, oh, oh, almost all of them are girls. They, they are studying more. They, they, they have. Uh, so, they, they work hard on their study and then their job. By the way, even in universities, uh, about all that, uh, about uh, journalism school, uh, we have just two universities teaching uh, journalism. Just two universities. And all the people who go to this university and uh, the Asian graduate of that, they are not uh, professional like the people who go to private uh, schools, not university schools, like uh, institutions, that uh, Jordan Media Institution or uh, another uh, uh, school or program teaching uh, uh, media. By the way, our fellows here, uh, Ote here is a graphic designer, uh, and I, I, I can say that he knows about journalism more than uh, a student study four years in uh, general university. That's uh, the revolution. They are another big gap between the general and the private on, uh, on the teaching journalism. And that's, that's why. I think, I think that uh, they take everything seriously. Yeah, that's good. Makes it. <laughs> Actually, um, Dana and uh, Sabah also like to share their comments on the presentation. <laughs> Good morning, Anna. Good morning, Dana. How are you? Fine. How are you? I'm doing all right. Um, I have a comment. Uh, like uh, with our new generation, we will become more. We will become more women in the media, like uh, us. Uh, yes. 
Uh, is saying that our gener uh, because like, we're the new generation and we're the ones that are going to uh, make a presence in the media field. It might be hard at the beginning, but we're still going to do it. And uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what uh, Salvin is saying is that in the past three years, there was an apparent uh, uh, change. He, uh, everyone started realizing more women were taking over the media field, especially in the last three years. They're, they're coming more apparent on the, the field, in the field.
just uh, that I was... Okay, just to clarify what he said, um, he was trying to say that uh, when uh, students, uh, when fresh graduates finish university, it's easier for the females to find jobs, but not in all uh, majors. For example, uh, when it comes to mechanics and car fixing and anything that has to do with the technical aspects of fixing anything, uh, it's easier for the males to find jobs. In fact, there are only five females that are studying uh, mechanical technicalities. I don't even know what the major is. Anna, Anna can, can, can I ask you a question to, uh, exactly to that point? Uh, you know, how can, you know, this, this, um, this borders or this uh, divides in like male or female dominated professions, especially male dominated professions, how can they be dissolved and, you know, how can they be loose, loosened so that, that women have much more opportunities in certain uh, professional sectors? I mean, what, uh, what, what's, your, what's your take on that? Well, that is a very interesting question because that is the question that everyone is, ta is, is trying to figure out. Even in the United States, even in Western Europe, we still have a lot of professions that are very male dominated. Uh, you mentioned earlier, you know, the jobs as a mechanic or, you know, working at a gas station, working, um, you know, in, in, in certain fields. That also plays, obviously, to certain interests that people have, you know. Um, we are, uh, as, as people, you know, we, we have certain interests in certain things, but we're also raised to have certain interests. A boy plays with cars, a girl plays with dolls. And, you know, and obviously that will lead to a, a girl becoming a nurse and a boy becoming, you know, a mechanic at a workshop. But um, the problem is, is that once that is established, it's really hard to break through, you know, these sort of, these traditions, you know, oh, traditionally there's no girl in a workshop, there's no boy being a nurse, or you know, these kind of things, and and the pro the, the the one of the main things is is that you know if you find, for example, a woman that says I want to be, um, uh, I want to be a mechanic, or I want to be a camera woman, I you know it, it seemed from our survey that a lot of the uh, technical jobs in Jordan news outlets are male dominated. Um, I want to be a camera woman, but then it's hard because there is no role model. They don't see any other female camera women. They don't know, you know, who to go talk to. They, they, so there's lack of role models that will discourage them. Also, you know, the, the, the male leadership may think, oh, women have never done that. Maybe they're not qualified. We don't want a woman. We don't want to include her in, in our team, and maybe she's not good at what she does. The problem is, is that the limits are, you know, in everybody's head. It's not just the men, you know, excluding women. It's women excluding themselves because they think that maybe they're not welcome, they're not qualified. And there is no solution, no easy solution to say, okay, now we're going to change it all. You know, the thinking has to change gradually. And, and I'm glad that you were mentioning that you feel like, you know, with your generation, this is already changing a little bit. Um, the, the, the one thing that obviously one can do is to, um, to keep fighting for it, to not give up, to not be discouraged. Just because somebody tells you, oh, you're a girl, you can't do that. Don't give up. Um, but when I want to give you an example here from the United States, um, and here in the United States, it's very similar. More girls graduate from journalism schools than boys. Yet, even in the United States, um, women are outnumbered two to one um, in media outlets. It's hard to say where exactly the disconnect is, and there will probably always be a little bit of a disconnect. Women are you know, they, they usually, they bear children. Men can't have children. It's always going to be the woman's job, and for that, you know, she's always obviously going to be a little more limited if she wants to have a family. It'll be harder for her to, um, to, to rise. But, you know, if, as long as you try to set up um, an environment, and, and you can't do that yourself. Everybody has to help. As long as you set up an environment where, you know, sexual harassment and everything that would discourage women from joining a male-dominated field 
as long as there's policies for that, as long as you can combine being a mom and being a professional. But at the same time, it's a cultural change, and cultural changes don't happen from, you know, yesterday to today. It, you know, it takes time. And the thing is not to accept the conventions, not to accept your limitations. Can, can, can I just give an example? And I think, I think that, <laughs> that was a really good learning for me uh, as well. Um, in German television, uh, in German television, it's very interesting, uh, and it's it's a little bit different in the U.S. But in in Germany, usually all camera people used to be men. There, there, there. It was until until 2000. The, uh, you very rarely saw uh, a news television female person operating a camera. It was like almost zero, <clears throat> and. Um, and it was also that atmosphere in, in German television. Uh, women were excluded. They said, you know, the camera, the camera's too heavy, and you know, <laughs> they didn't, they didn't say that women can't shoot, but uh, they, they, um, they didn't got the chance. I mean, they, uh, they, they weren't on, um, you know, they, 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 they just didn't were in the discussion at all. And um, so I was working in in this field where. We were, where there were just men, and then some female camera women came up, and all of a sudden, and uh, you know, some someone said, "Okay, she should she should get a chance." And all of a sudden, these these women come up, and we looked at at their work and what they did, and we were just blown away. And then we thought, it, uh, we, then we, then we discussed, and it's like, why are we thinking this? I mean, why are we thinking that we are amazed that a woman can film this? Uh, because there's no reason. There's no reason why there's a difference, you know, between a man, man and a woman. And we, uh, you know, amongst us men, we discuss like, are, are we stupid? Why, why are we not seeing that we are a missing women in our camera department? And why are we thinking, you know, why are we prejudiced to think that uh, women, you know, it's so special that women do a great job in in the field of camera operation. And uh, you know, I realized, and and some of my colleagues realized, you know, that our thinking, just because we weren't exposed to women in our department because we didn't had any, you know, was just completely wrong and 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 so so bad. And then, you know, there are more women, and uh, we worked with them, and all of a sudden we saw that that our work has changed because when women came to our camera department. It just changed the whole dynamic. You know, the, the, the films were different. We learned from them, they learned from us. And it, it was, it was ju just the fact that we discussed, you know, it's so special that women <laughs> operate a camera. That was, that was an interesting experience. And it, it's, it's a, it was very embarrassing because we, we shouldn't be thinking like this. But, but actually, you know, even in Germany in the 2000s, there weren't so many women in media productions. And then, at the on the other hand, women were the video editors, and there were no men. And then men came into into the the workforce and, and worked, uh, you know, in the, in a very uh, female-dominated area. And it was the same, the reverse, you know, where women said, "Well, men can't edit as as well as as women," you know, because they don't, you know, they have they. I mean, they're different. And then all of a sudden, you you saw uh, these these films produced by. Uh, uh, edited by men, and it was the same discussion. It was that was a really interesting, uh, interesting experience, you know. But but uh, I from my learning from from that, and you know, I, I tried to be open minded as well. But uh, you know, I, I I had to learn too, you know, to 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 not wonder why, you know, why is it so special that that women are in a certain field, you know, because they, everyone should be equal, and every everyone can be equal. You know, women also can be firefighters. I mean, they're you know that that's another area for where where women are discriminated, and uh, and I think you know we have to have to overcome our own prejudice. I, I don't know Anna, if if if, uh, if that makes sense, but but that was my my own personal experience, and it was a big aha effect for me. Yeah, Lars, you're absolutely right, and um, I you know I I'm so glad that we have a lively discussion. Um, you know, among all of us here talking about it, um, and I, I hate to interrupt this discussion, but I do have another PowerPoint presentation prepared, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about what my organization does. 
but I know that there's somebody, there's someone sitting there wanting to say something. So we'll we'll uh, go back to the discussion for just a couple more minutes, and then uh, we'll dive into the uh, the depths of the International Women's Media Foundation. How does that sound? Good. Would you, would you like to stop now or if I'm just... No, okay, let's, let's, let's finish up the debate first. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, like, uh, actually, for me, I haven't really... Uh, first of all, thank you for the, uh, for the PowerPoint. It was really... Uh, uh, yeah, professional. It was really good. The information percentage numbers. Uh, I need to uh, tell you that... Um, it's only my point of view, but let's uh, talk about women in Jordan and in the media fields that is very good in bring to other uh, countries. But uh, we're talking actually to the, to women, let's say, not in the um, rural or areas or unprivileged areas. We're talking about women that really have their chance. Uh, they had really good education or working in the capital, let's say, uh, and so uh, they really had the chance to, to, to be strong, to, to talk. But when we go to the unfinished uh, or poor pockets in Jordan, they were raised as, not as uh, gender, they were raised um, as people in, mar I don't know how they say it, marginal? Uh, yeah, okay, so uh, they really, really don't see that they are important and they're just trying not to involve or interact and to, to fight the corruption and the act in this, in, in this cycle. So basically they're, they feel that they're not really, there's no bridge between let's say the capital and the I'm not concentrating on the capital. Uh, because each woman can find it her own way. She can find it deeper in her family, relatives, uh, anything she really wants. It. But uh, they see themselves apart from this involvement and development. People like uh, responsible people, they don't really uh, try to uh, make bridges with them. So actually, they uh, they think, okay, we we don't have, we're not capable of development, so let's survive our day by living our traditional uh, ways and uh, and not bother ourselves thinking because we already have other problems to think of. Uh, again, this is only my point of view. Uh, for that, let's say if we we'll go deeper, uh, we're talking about women. But actually, if we uh, see, uh, we talk about women, we're actually talking then in this discrimination, then it's a fall on both women and men, because if we discriminate and give their women, uh, give, we don't give them all their rights, then we're also making over both on men to do other things that women can do. So it's a Basically, we're, overload, we're putting overload on um, men as well. Uh, so, uh, women in, let's say, uh, poor countries, poor areas, uh, they're not able, and men, they're not able to express more about their feelings, so they don't really, uh, they don't really uh, okay, have really, really uh, have, they're not directed to do the right thing, so they grow up, they're not role models, so that will make it more, uh, okay, you don't know how to do that, so you can't do this, you can't work there because you can't protect yourself, but when we go back, it's because they were not allowed to express more, it's a bit hard for them to express the uh, you always must follow the big boss and family, so it's only my opinion. Okay. Well, you know, and and um, it's it's important to have your opinion and don't you know, it's that that's that's everybody has their opinion and it's important to have your opinion and to express it. I want to go back to what you said earlier about you know women in rural areas and how they are you know they don't have the luxury of 
of living in the capital and they don't have the luxury of fighting for women's rights because they're really, you know, they have to concentrate on other things. And obviously in the country usually it's a little more, um, uh, you know, it's, it's a little more traditional than, than it would be in the capital. That's a, that is always the case. Um, the, uh, the thing is, though, that every person wants to be empowered. And um, every person wants to wants their voice to be heard, and and of course you can't you know it's it's the same in every country. Urban areas always are more liberal and more progressive than than the country, the countryside. But um, to give these women a voice is not just by empowering them to become somebody else or to become a firefighter. It's also to give them a way to express their voice. So um, if these women are basically, if they want to live their traditional life or are stuck in their traditional life, there is no problem with that as long as that is also part of the media, as long as their voices find their way into the mainstream media. Um, and that is something that my organization is trying to teach a lot, is that um, you can empower these people by giving them a voice, by taking a camera team out there and talking to them and airing on national television or on radio or print a newspaper article about them. And, and that way you can include everybody in society. And that is the important thing. It's not, you know, the, the, the idea of gender equality is not that everybody gets to be the CEO of a company. The idea is that everybody gets to have gets to sit at the table, everybody gets to have their voice heard. And, and I think that is something very important and that is a lesson for every journalist to learn is to look at the marginalized groups, to look at the groups that are way out there that never get their voices heard and give them a way to express themselves and to amplify their voice. Um, but yes, I mean, you're, you're right, there's, um, you know, there's obviously a lot of obstacles that need to be overcome. There's a lot of thinking that needs to change, and it all takes time. I mean, America is still has gender discrimination. Germany has still has gender discrimination. Um, we're, we're obviously, we haven't really, you know, gotten to a point where, you know, we're done with gender equality. Well, we're not. It'll take a while, but I, you know, I'm... I'm glad to see this lively discussion because it, it feels like people are thinking about um, these topics, and that's that's the first step. Actually, that's a very important step. Um, so, thank you for sharing your opinion with us. All right, I want, if that's all right with you guys, I would like to dive into um, uh, my organization, the International Women's Media Foundation, does a lot of work. Um, to advance women in the field of news media. And um, I, I wanted to tell you a little bit more about that just to give you an idea of what we do and, and what the things are that can be done to include women in, in the news media and to advance um, their role. And, um, and I have actually a PowerPoint presentation that I will start right now. Um, let me see if I can find it. There we go. Oops, start screen share. There we go. All right. Um, so the name of my organization is the International Women's Media Foundation, um, and that's obviously a, um, a you know an easy name um, because it describes everything. We are global. We we operate global. We're not just in America, although we are based in Washington D.C. And uh, we mostly work for women that are in the media. Um, and our organization was founded. Um, in 1990, so we're we're not that old. We're about 23 years old now, and um, we're we're a very small organization, but we're very effective. And um, if you wonder what it is that we do, basically the way that I understand um, our organization is that we work at the crossroads of freedom of speech, freedom of uh, press and women's rights and gender equality. So we basically, we're at this intersection of press freedom and women's rights. Um, and that, what, what that really means, I mean, that could mean a lot of things. I want to share our core beliefs with you. The IWMF believes in the leadership role of women in independent journalism worldwide. 
meaning you know women are not just reporters women are not just news anchors women should also be leading news organizations just as much as men we also believe in equal opportunity and advancement for women journalists um, this is what we've been talking about um, earlier today you know giving women um, the same chance to be successful as men um, we also believe in um, support for women journalists in the context of crisis intimidation and persecution and um, I, I don't know what the situation is in Jordan there are a lot of countries in the world that um, that are not interested in independent journalists and their reporting um, and in order to uh, limit let's say restrict um, the stories that journalists present they will intimidate them they will um, threaten them and in some instances kill them and um, we lend support to women journalists that are uh, being threatened and our last core belief is the importance of women's journalistic perspectives to providing high quality information in the public interest um, that is basically the last point that we touched on uh, in our debate which is to give women a voice it's not just about women getting good jobs but women getting to state their opinion getting to state their point of view in the mainstream media um, these are our core beliefs uh, what do we do to um, to advance these beliefs what does the IWMF do to advance the belief and the leadership role of women journalists uh, in independent journalism and I want to give you a couple examples of the work that we do these are just examples this is and this is by far not everything that we do it's just one quick example um, one of the things that we do is we help women journalists with their entrepreneurial news endeavors by providing funding and training what that means is that for example um, I, I was talking about it earlier that women journalists rarely ever are the CEO of a news company they're re rarely ever the top executive person at a news company but they can make themselves the CEO of their own news company um, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to help women journalists with money and with additional training um, to start up their own ideas their own news media outlets and um, and one of the examples is for example we give out a twenty thousand dollar grant actually three twenty thousand dollar grants every year to uh, at this stage young American women journalists that have a great startup idea one of the women that we found that last year is you see her um, that is Erin Polgreen she's from Chicago and she founded a little tablet magazine for for iPads called Symbolia and Symbolia is is very exciting and it's 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 innovative in a way because it's actually it's a comic journalism she she doesn't write stories like you would in a newspaper she draws news stories and she has freelancers that work for her to draw um, news stories as as a cartoon as a comic um, if you ever have a chance check it out at symbolia.com it's really it's a it's a great idea and it's 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 a new form of journalism and we felt that you know she should have a chance to to advance this idea and become you know have this leadership role within her own company so that is one of the things that we do to help women um, achieve the, the the leadership roles that they're aspiring to um, another thing that um, I was talking about is equal opportunity and advancement for women journalists and how do we um, advance our belief in that um, we do a lot of advocacy on behalf of women journalists to help media outlets to help the, their employers understand what the benefits are of gender equality um, and what the benefits are of having women represented in all ranks within their media outlet um, and one of the things that um, one of the great success success stories that we've had is with Bloomberg News I'm not sure if you've heard of Bloomberg News it's um, it's um, it's a huge news service they mostly concentrate on economic news but you know sort of they try to portray economic and financial news in in a very holistic way and their editor-in-chief Matt Winkler um, is on on our board and we have worked with him 
to implement for Bloomberg News to implement um, a program that helps women at Bloomberg News um, get better stories, write better stories, ad get uh, advanced within Bloomberg News. Um, it's it's a great success. Bloomberg News has um, more women journalists working there than any other news company, any other international news company that we are aware of. Um, it this is this is a really really uh, great initiative that Bloomberg News has been implementing, supporting women and female managers. Um, and uh, for example, that has led to the first all female. Bloomberg News Bureau um, in Vietnam. The uh, the Bloomberg News um, Bureau in Vietnam is all women. There's five women. Um, I'm not saying that you know all offices or all places should be all women, but it's a great example because we all know of so many places where it's all men, and to finally have a place where it's all women, you know, seems like obviously we are achieving our goals. We're beginning to achieve our goals. Um, I can only invite you to go to our website and read a little bit more about the series Women Behind the News. Um, it's a website story, a series of stories that we have on our website. Um, and it will tell you a little bit more about uh, you know, how we are trying to, um, to advance equal opportunity for women journalists in, in the world. Um, how do we advance our belief in supporting women journalists in context of crisis, intimidation, and persecution? As I was saying in earlier, press freedom is not given in every country in the world. There are various countries um, that where the leadership, the government, has no interest in women or journalists in general speaking their mind and investigating stories that may shine uh, a negative light on the country's leadership. Um, and these women often get intimidated. In, in various forms, and like I was saying earlier, sometimes even killed. Um, we, um, I don't know if you have heard of uh, a Russian journalist by the name of Anna Politkovskaya. She was shot by uh, the Russian government because she was investigating stories that they did not want her to investigate. Anyway, what do we do to um, support women journalists? The IWMF um, honors every year honors three women journalists with the Courage in Journalism Award. Um, that is the only international award that recognizes the bravery, the courage of women journalists. Um, everybody can report about the weather. Everybody can report about things that are easy to report about. But what about people that continue to report um, even when they're being threatened, even when their life is in danger? These are the people that we try to recognize with this Courage and Journalism Award. And now you may think, well, that's an award. That's nice. I put it on my shelf. How does that provide any protection? Well, the award itself obviously comes with a lot of international attention. This award is, is internationally recognized. And we, when, when we honor these women, we fly them over to the United States. And we have two huge events, one in New York and another one in Los Angeles. And a lot of celebrities come, a lot of media come, and they cover, you know, these stories and they cover these people. And with all the uh, the news coverage and and sort of the fame that comes with this award, comes a certain bit of protection, because the government will not harm someone who is very known. They will really only harm someone if they think that they can get away with it unnoticed. But if they know that now the international community is aware of these journalists and know um, who they are and follow them, they are less likely to do anything to them. And I want to give you uh, three examples of our Courage and Journalism Award winners from last year. The first one is Asma uh, Algul. She's from Gaza City, Palestine. And uh, she's a blogger. Um, she writes for uh, Al Monitor and a couple other. She usually writes in Arabic, so I'm sure you can write, uh, you can read her articles much better than I can. Um, I, I only read her articles when she writes them in English. Um, Asma is a blogger who, um, who obviously growing up in, in Gaza City um, has, uh, has faced quite a few challenges. And she has, um, being in Gaza, she has 
not only criticized Israel, she has also criticized Hamas and Fatah, and um, she's very outspoken with her criticism, and that really has put her on um, what Americans call the shit list, that really has put her in the crosshairs of everyone. Um, and she has been threatened. Her uncle is um, uh, a military, a senior military leader in Hamas, and she actually grew up with her uncle. And at one point, um, when she was writing articles criticizing Hamas, her uncle threatened to kill her. And she continued to write. They told her to stop writing. Um, she didn't. She uh, she continued um, to to criticize her uncle and and Hamas. Um, and that really has put her life in danger. And um, she still continues to write, and we're very proud of that. Um, we think that these are the women that deserve all the recognition that we can get them. So this is Asma. She was uh, honored with our Courage and Journalism Award last year in 2012. Uh, we have another person um, right here on the screen that is Riyadh. Riyadh Alimu is an Ethiopian uh, journalist. She writes uh, columns for um, a, a newspaper that actually does not exist anymore at this point. It was closed down by the government called um, Fiti. Uh, Riyadh is currently in prison for being a journalist. Um, wait, wait, wait. Anna, Anna, just one yeah. second. One second. They just dropped off. They just dropped off. Yeah, it's, it's a connection. I can't see when, uh, when I have my screen, my full screen, so I'm glad you yeah. told me. Ja, ja, nee, egal, sind gerade abgefallen. Wirklich, ähm, ähm, die, äh, die, die, die sind gleich wieder da. Moment. Uh, ich muss mich beeilen. Das ist schon gleich vorbei. Yeah. This is the lively discussion. It's uh, the sound quality was a little bad, but I really enjoyed hearing everybody's opinion on uh, on women and gender equality. Ja, yeah, it's good, ne? No? Um, yeah, it's very good. Uh, I, I, what I like is, is that they, you know, slowly asking better questions. They, they are much more involved, and uh, you know, especially a topic like this, uh, you know, where you might think that boys are very shy. I, I was actually very surprised that that, <laughs> that the boys were really super involved. Telling you, you know, we we need to we need men's rights. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, I think they're back. Yeah, they Yep, they're coming back. Okay. <laughs> All right, there you are. Okay. Hi everybody. Everyone, uh so Anna's going to continue. All right. I don't know where I lost you. I hope that the, the so the second the second person that uh, that you uh, honored was All right. So, um the uh, the second person that you see on the screen here that is uh, her name is Riyad Alimu. She's an Ethiopian columnist, um, and she is currently in prison. She has been in prison for almost two years now. Um, she she uh, has been convicted as a terrorist. Um, obviously, we wouldn't give her our Courage in Journalism award if she was actually a terrorist. She's not. Um, she. Uh, writes articles in in um, in various newspapers. Um, she's written articles that were critical of the Ethiopian government. Um, and in Ethiopia, criticizing the government equals terrorism. So she was put on trial, um, and she was initially sentenced to um, I think 14 years in prison. And um, just just to sort of. Uh, highlight what's going on here. Um, imagine that if you criticized um, the mayor of Amman or you know some other politician um, and the police came into your house and arrested you and threw you in jail for 14 years just because you criticized them. That is what has happened to Riyadh. Um, and it is she's still in prison. Her prison sentence has been reduced to five years. Um, but she has only served two, not even two years so far, so she will remain in prison for a, a long time. But she um, she has told us, we have communicated with her uh, numerous times, and she has told us that even when she's released from prison, she will go back to be a journalist and to, um, to 
report on things that the government doesn't want to be reported about. Um, so she was uh, our second winner last year, and then our third winner last year was Khadija Ismailova. She's from Azerbaijan. She um, is actually starting to become a very famous investigative journalist. Um, so something that what happened to her is it's actually a very horrible story. Um, she uh, she was investigating the the links between um, the Azerbaijani president's family and certain oil companies, and um, the Azerbaijani president's family did not want to um, to uh, have published the uh, the fact that they own a big stake in these oil companies, um, and uh, Khadija was investigating more and more about government corruption and every time she was investigating government corruption the uh, the name of the Azerbaijani um, president's family came up um, and so that put her on the radar of of the government uh, which was not very pleased with her and her reporting so they planted cameras in her apartment she didn't know this she was gone on a conference for a couple of days and when she came back there had been cameras in in her apartment that she was not aware of um, a couple of weeks later, she had published another uh, story about uh, corruption in, in uh, Azerbaijan. She got a letter, um, an anonymous letter with photos of her in, in a very intimate situation with her boyfriend. And, and they said, if you don't stop reporting, we will release the videotape that we have of you having intercourse with your boyfriend. And this, this obviously you can imagine how shameful something like this is. Uh, Khadija did not stop reporting. She continued to write her stories about corruption and the video was published. It was actually shown on national television. And that is the kind of um, the kind of behavior that you know countries that don't value press freedom will show towards independent journalists. Um, she was our third uh, Courage in Journalism Award winner last year. Uh, she has now become very famous, which is great because the uh, government is uh, leaving her alone for the most part, um, and that is exactly what we're trying to achieve: is that these women can uh, go about their profession, that they can report the stories that they report, and that they can do so without danger to their lives and their liberties. So um, that is one of the things that we do to give women support. Um, in the context of crisis, intimidation, and persecution. And then um, the last point was um, importance of women's journalistic per perspectives. How um, does the IWMF advance its belief in that? Um, we provide a lot of in-depth training to journalists, male and female, not just women journalists, to understand the importance of women's voices in reporting the news. And that a lot of what we do is very similar to the program that you're participating in right now. There are fellowships just like yours where um, all over the world we provide the kind of training that you're getting and usually our focus is mostly on um, making the journalists understand how important it is to include women not just as journalists but also as news sources, as interview partners, as experts into the news. And I want to quickly introduce three programs to you that we're running currently. We have an HIV AIDS investigative reporting fellowship in South Africa. Um, uh, this is our third year and we're about to, we, this is our second year that we just finished. We're about to start our third year um, training women and men journalists in South Africa to become investigative reporters. Um, concentrating on HIV AIDS. Um, as you may know, South Africa is the country with the highest infection rate in the world. But particularly, we try to make help them understand that they have to include women into HIV AIDS reporting and that they have to include women's voices. Another program that we have is in the Philippines. It's an environmental investigative reporting fellowship. Um, as you may know, the Philippines are actually a huge group of islands and they're very threatened by climate change. Um, this group of uh, men and women journalists are being trained to report about the environment and how that affects the people of the Philippines. Um, and again, uh, we teach them the importance of including women's voices in that. And then the last program is a very new program that we're currently um, 
holding in Morocco. These are women journalists from all over the world. They're um, from America. They're from Europe. They're from um, they're from the Middle East, and they get to travel with us to Morocco and Western Sahara to report about uh, the issues there, about food security, about um, the dispute between Morocco and Western Sahara. Um, that is another program that uh, that we currently have to help not only to help these women understand uh, the importance of the issue, but in this case also to help women get ahead. When you include women in the trainings, like even the one that you're participating in, you set them on equal footing with men. And then the next time there is a promotion, the next time there's a new job to be filled, these women may be just as much considered for the job as uh, you know, as their male colleagues. So that is another thing that we do. Um, just our my last slide. I just want to, um, if you're interested in, in more of the work that the International Women's Media Foundation does, um, you can of course visit our website. It's iwmf.org. Um, it's a great website with a lot of great resources. Um, you can of course follow us on Twitter at iwmf. You can uh, visit our uh, Facebook page and please like our Facebook page, iwmf page. Um, and you can also go to our YouTube channel, and I would all invite you to um, go to youtube.com slash the IWMF. Um, it's, it's a great page with a lot of great videos that you might find interesting. Um, and uh, that is basically it. This is um, the last slide. Um, and uh, this is what my organization does. And before um, I have three more minutes, I want to just say one last thing. We have great international opportunities and I invite you to keep checking us out um, right now we have a call for applications for our Elizabeth Neufer fellowship and um, you might want to look into that we are um, giving the opportunity to one journalist who reports on social justice and human rights to come to the United States for seven months to study at the uh, MIT and to intern at the New York Times and the Boston Globe um, so uh, go to our website, it's right there on the front page, um, and see if you qualify for it. This, is, uh, this particular fellowship is limited to women, so um, sorry guys, uh, sometimes we have to discriminate against you. Um, but um, if this is something of interest, or if you think that this might be of interest to you in the future, um, there's a lot of things that we can do to help you in your careers as well. And, like I said, um, apart from this particular fellowship that I just mentioned, we of course welcome and include men just as much as women. Uh, our fellows would like you to repeat the YouTube channel link and Facebook page name if possible. Oh, I actually, you know what, I have everything that I talked about today, I have um, for you to download online. Let me um, actually have the, uh, I'm just, the link. I'm just posting it on Google Plus right now. Okay. Um, uh, Lars just said that he's posting it, but you can also download it. The today's presentations and also the the excerpts from the global report that I was talking about the uh, Middle East ex uh, excerpt and the Jordan excerpt you can download all of that at iwmf.org slash downloads very easy to remember um, but Lars is also going to post it so you can you can just pull it from Google as well all right um, I'm just uh, just posting the link right now and everyone should uh, see um, the download link for um, all of Anna's presentations uh, on Google Plus. It's on the home page right now. So I just posted it. And what you can do is uh, you click on that link and you can download all her presentations and all the materials that uh, she mentioned in her presentation. Thank you, Anna. We have enjoyed the presentations. Well, th thank, you. thank you for listening. Thank you for uh, um, spending the time with me. I had a lot of fun and um, I don't know if I get to uh, address you as a group again. If I don't, then I wish you all the best of luck. Um, I hope that you still have my email address. Feel free to email me with anything, anytime. Um, I'd be excited to hear from you. I'd be very excited 
if you ever come to the United States, I'd love to take you out for a coffee and uh, uh, introduce you to some cool people here in Washington, D.C. Um, if you ever need any help, um, let me know. I, can, I know a lot of people um, that might be able to help you if I can't. Um, and I really hope that uh, you guys are going to have a great, uh, great career as journalists in Jordan. I think that you are the next generation and that you can, you can make the difference that Jordan needs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. That, that was an excellent session. Uh, I enjoyed it very much, and I know that uh, all our media fellows enjoyed it uh, as the same way as, as your first session was amazing. Uh, I really, thank you so much for taking the time and uh, sharing all your uh, insights and expertise with us. Well, thank you again. You have a, a great day. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.